Young guys uh, developing them this year, do you sacrifice victories because of that? It's a good question. Um, I think if you look at the history of our game, when you try to develop you know, three, four young players, uh, to do that and win at a very high level is often very hard to do at the same time. Um, the good thing for us is that Christian Brown, in his third year, but has played meaningful minutes, big minutes, played in the finals. Uh, you know, Peyton Watson, after not playing his first year, was a rotational player for us last year. And then Julian Strother, obviously who was a rookie last year, was a rotation player prior to hurting his knee and um, has had an outstanding preseason summer league and everything kind of, all the signs point to him having a very good season in his second year. With all that being said, yeah, I mean, like young guys, you know, you, you go through some growing pains with them. And, um, you know, last year they got a taste of it. And the bottom line is kids like Christian, Peyton, Julian, those three especially, they have to be good for us this year. Whether they're young or not, like we got to move past young. They have to be good for us. And uh, if we're going to be a team that can, you know, uh, be a dangerous team. Yes, we have Nicole, we have Jamal, we have Michael, we have Aaron, and we had added Russ and Dario, but much is going to be asked of Christian, Julian, and Peyton Watson this year. And from all my interactions with them, I think those guys are excited for that opportunity. You guys are staying athletic longer into their careers now, but if Aaron Gordon loses some of his athleticism over the life of this new contract, how can he improve in other areas, or what would you like to see him do to mitigate some of those losses athletically? Well, yeah, I mean, I think uh, to your point, that's just a natural part of everybody's game. You know, um, you know the longer you play, the older you get, you know, maybe always have that. There are, there are rare examples like, you know, what Vince Carter was doing, what LeBron James is doing. Those That late in their careers is just, you know, unheard of. So, you know, I think Aaron is that type of an athlete where he'll always have an athletic advantage. But with, if you took away the athleticism, obviously, Aaron's playmaking. I think he's a guy that we can play through more. He has... Uh, he was a backup point guard in Orlando for years, and we played through him, and he has the ball in his hands. He can score, but I think he's a really good playmaker. Uh, and obviously, you can always improve your three-point percentage, your free throw percentage, and be, be just even more consistent from those areas. So as, as athleticism maybe wanes, you need your skill level to improve. And you've seen countless examples in NBA history that have had that happen to them. They may not be the explosive athlete they once were, but mentally and skill-wise, they've improved to counter that loss. And then that would be the same for Aaron or any other player. Aaron talks a lot about mentality and the importance of it. So I guess what stands out about the way he kind of approaches the game? Well, I mean, selfless is the thing that jumps to mind for me ever since he's come to Denver. Uh, he's always come in here with a team mindset and how he can help the team. It's never been about me trying to stand out, pound my chest and say, this is me and look at me. It's been about how can I help Nicola, how can I help Jamal and everybody else that plays uh, for our team. Uh, so I love that about Aaron. I think he's a selfless player. And for me, I'm thankful that that contract is over because less distractions. You now you want, as a coach, you want everybody focusing on the task at hand. And that's, that's the season. So to not have that hanging over his shoulder, that's, uh, that allows him to fully focus on being the best Aaron Gordon for this team, going out there, playing at a high level on both ends of the floor. Much is asked of Aaron Gordon, and, uh, and he's a guy that continues to show he's more than capable of answering that call on both ends. With Gordon's deal done, and you, your core four, what kind of opportunity does this group have over the next year or two or three? Well, I hope his career path is, you know, uh, to, to become a multiple-time world champion. I mean, like, that's, at the end of the day, like, you have your career earnings, you have your career stats, but what truly separates people is championships. All right, I mean, that, that's always a constant argument. You know, would you rather be Steve Kerr or Steve Nash? A guy that won multiple championships or a guy that won multiple MVPs? And, you know, there's not a right or wrong answer, but I think for Aaron and anybody else in this building, you know, we want to be remembered as a team that won not just one championship, but multiple. That's going to be really hard, but that's why, I mean, if you're not striving to be the best and challenging yourself to be the best, then, well, then you're all just wasting your time. So I'm hoping that when Aaron's career is done, uh, as a Denver Nugget and he finished his career here in Denver, he's remembered as one of the key components and key pieces to a championship team that set records and was the best era of Denver Nugget basketball in the history of their franchise. Okay, and with that core, that's where I was trying to get, and you said you spoke to that a lot, 
terms of Aaron, but with that group together for the next three years or so, right. you, you, I assume you believe you have a great opportunity to do good. Yeah, yeah. I mean, you know, shoot, you got a guy in Nikola Jokic, a three-time MVP, and, and who's to say he's not going to win three more? I mean, we all know what he's capable of. Uh, you know, Michael Porter's gotten bigger, he's gotten stronger. He played 81 games last year. He shows he can handle the rigors and demands of a season. Uh, Jamal Murray just signed his contract this summer. So now his whole mental focus is on being healthy and getting back to playing the level we all know he's capable of. And same thing for Aaron Gordon. So you have your core four, and now you have a guy like Russell Westbrook, who's going to come off the bench, who could close games for us. Uh, we did special situations today, and I love the versatility that Russ allows you. Same thing with Dario. And then you, you mentioned it early, kids, the three young guys in terms of CB, Peyton, Julian. Those guys are going to have a great opportunity to go out there and help in this starting unit, off the bench, and help this team become, you know, a, again, a team that this city will remember for a very long time. Rick Carlisle said the other day that the league informed coaches that more physicality is allowed allowed this season. Is that something that you're in favor of? Does it help this team, and how does the team adjust if that is true? Yeah, I don't really know if it's more physicality. I think the refs are going to call it more like they did after the All-Star break. So the league wasn't more physical. It just didn't call as many fouls. Does that make sense? Yeah. So I don't think you're going to see it. It's not going to be a throwback to 1988 New York Knicks. Uh, or my dad was in Detroit with the bad boys. I think, you know, the, the league is allowing us to maybe play through some of those calls, which I think will be great. Uh, for many, many years, every rule that was Im imposed was always in favor of the offense, which makes it really hard. And that's why the scoring has gone through the roof. The numbers have gone through the roofs. And um, so I think it's good, you know, give, give the defensive player and give the defensive team a chance to guard out there within the letter of the law. But let, let's play the game and, uh, you know, let the best players in the world showcase their talents. With any, with any rule change, there's players that benefit and, and are harmed by those. Do you see your team, is everybody benefit or some guys that benefit from more physicality? Well, I'm sure after some games I'm going to be, you know, crying foul that, Hey, Nicola was, you know, mugged out there tonight and we didn't get any foul calls. And then there's going to be nights where we're going to say, hey, you know, we thought the, the game was ref the right way. Referees, as I always say, have the hardest job in the world. Um, and what all you want as a coach and a player is consistency. If it's consistent from quarter to quarter, game to game, then there's a lot less you can complain about. But um, you got to read the game as a player. you got to read the game as a coach. How is it being? Is it being called really close tonight well then show your hands you're not letting us play as much tonight and you got to react to that but uh, yeah you're right every rule that's imposed every change in uh, the referees philosophy players are always finding loopholes and ways to get around that and I'm sure this year will be no different Go ahead, Benny, last just one. quickly uh, start the season will Jamal be under any restrictions whether it's minutes on a game basis or I know you've got a back-to-back -back pretty early in the schedule any restrictions there at all all right so you, because you started the question off with very quickly no Okay. <laughs>